Thank you for being with us tonight uh, here at the Northwest Church of Christ as we're about to study the Word of God. I want you to grab your Bible, have an open Bible and an open mind. Let's get deep into the Word of God and let's see what God has for us tonight. Before we, before I read the, the text tonight, I want to remind us uh, December the 20th, that's next Wednesday, uh, is our Wow Day, Worship on Wednesday. So I want everyone who's with us tonight. We'll be in person. We're going to have Sunday on a Wednesday. Bless the name of Jesus. So we want you in the house. Uh, it's, been, it's been some time since we've been together in one place. And so we will uh, uh, we will be together and gather together in one place. And we want you to be with us so, y'all, so you can be blessed uh, as we experience worship together on a Wednesday night. Amen. In the middle of the week. So bring somebody, bring family, bring, bring friends, bring somebody to gather with us as we experience uh, WOW uh, December the 20th, worship uh, on Wednesday. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 6, um, and I pray tonight that the word of God goes forth and it will bless you in a mighty way. I recognize tonight, and uh, as I studied this text, and uh, I recognize that this is not a text that is oftentimes preached. It's not a text that oftentimes is received well because God oftentimes looked at us in such a way that he wants to every now and then challenge us in our walk with him. And so I want you to resist the temptation tonight, asking the question, asking God, God, when are you going to bring me out of my storm? But rather ask the question, God, what are you trying to teach me in this season? Sometimes we just ask the wrong question. Sometimes we're asking God to bring us out of something. And God is saying, you need to ask yourself, what am I trying to teach you in this season? And so tonight, that's what I, that as we read the text and as we highlight some things from the word of God, I will, let's see what thus says the Lord on tonight. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, and beginning with verse 1, I'll be reading from the uh, H, uh, uh, H, uh, CSB translation of God's word, uh, and it reads like this. If any of you has a legal dispute against another, do you dare go to the court before the unrighteous? And not before the saints. Or don't you know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters or cases? Don't you know that we would judge angels, not to mention ordinary matters? So if you have cases pertaining this life, Do you select those who have no standing in the church to judge? I say this to your shame. Can it be that there is not one person, wise person among you who is able uh, to come between his brothers? Instead, believers goes to the court against believers and that before unbelievers. Therefore, to have legal dispute against one another is already a moral failure for you? Why not rather put up with the injustice? Why not rather be cheated? Instead, you act unjustly and cheat and you do this to believers. Don't you know that the unrighteous will know that the uh, the unrighteous would not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not, don't be deceived, nor sexual immoral people idolaters, adulterers, or any practicing homosexuality. No thieves, greed, greedy people, drunken, verbally abusive people, or swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. And some of you used to be like this, but you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the spirit of our our God. May God bless the reading of this word uh, tonight. Tonight, tonight what I want to do, I want to talk to us from the subject as we can look at this thought, uh, this this, uh, series, Why We Can't Get Along. Uh, I want to use this thought tonight, how to handle your grievances while hurting. How, How to handle your grievances while hurting. Can somebody put that in the pet box for me? 
it's going to be a rough word tonight. How how to handle your grievances while hurting. Uh, the, the Bible is very clear that in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 13 through 18, the Bible uh, says, Jesus says, I tell, I say unto you that uh, thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail against you. But I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whoever shall bound on earth, you know it well, shall be bound in heaven. But whoever shall be loosed on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13 through 19, that Jesus the Christ promised to build his church. I, I will have us to know tonight that the church, amen, is the place where we've been called out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son. The, the, the church is a gathering of the saved. It's the gathering of us to come together to serve and to worship God together. It is the sanctuary of our faith finds community. It is a place where we are not just experiencing salvation, but the church experience, amen, transformation. But, but I want you to know that although we are a people who have been called out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son, although we are people who God has called the light of the world and the salt of the earth, although we are a people, that the Bible says that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. I, I still want you to know that even in the body of Christ, there are moments in time where you will be hurt and you will have grievances. I, I, let me say that again. I want you to know that the church is the body of Christ. It is a group, the group of the saved who gather and worship and serve God together. We are a people who the Bible declares that we are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. However, I want to tell us tonight that although that may be the case, I want to share with you tonight from the word of God that that does not mean that we will not experience hurt and grievances in the church. Let me say it one more time for somebody who didn't get it, that, that I want you to know that, that the church of my Lord, it is the body of Christ. I want you to know tonight that the church of my Lord, it is the body of the saved. It is, is a group of people who the Bible declares that we are the salt of the earth. The Bible declares that we are the light of the world. The, the Bible declares that we are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. However, I want you to know, don't get it twisted, because just because we are all of that, you need to understand it does not exempt the fact that there are moments and times in your life and in my life where you will be hurt in the church and you will experience grievances. Now, now I need you to grasp that tonight because oftentimes in the world in which we live, and in the world in which a man we're in, sometimes culture sometimes tries to dictate on how we see church and how we see Jesus. Let me say it one more time. I understand tonight that there are moments that grievances will arise. There are moments where hurt will arise. There are moments where brothers and sisters in Christ will offend you. But I want you to be very clear tonight that God has always put in mind the church of my Lord to be a, 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 a visible being of him on earth. I need you to see this tonight that that's because we are members of the body of Christ does not exempt us from experience, hurt, and grievances in the church. Now, I, I want you, I know I need to be very clear tonight and the reason I need to, uh, us to understand tonight, because we got to recognize from the word of God that the body of Christ, it belongs to him. We, we got to recognize tonight that, that when he called us out of the world into the kingdom of God's dear son, that God literally wants us to be his hands and his feet on earth. Did y'all gather that? Now, the question I have tonight, because after I've been hurt and after I have have a grievance, and after I've been wronged and mistreated, the question becomes, how in the world do I handle the grievance while I'm hurting? Amen. Why, how, how do I handle the pain? 
How do I handle, amen, but what I'm experiencing? How, how do I deal with that brother? How do I deal with that sister? Why can't we get along? It's because we have not been taught of how to handle our grievances while hurting. I, I want you to know that there is the way the world handles it. And then there is the way the kingdom should handle it. I'm talking in here tonight. I, I want you to know that there's a way that the world responds and there is a way that God wants his people to respond. Well, tonight from the word of God, I want to show you that in the Bible, amen, in the Bible, the word of God, there was those even in the Bible who found themselves hurt and wrong by folk in the church. Oh man, please, please let me let me stop with a pin note there. Don't act as though that you, we waited till we got to the 21st century for folks to start getting hurt in the church. Folk been getting in, in, hurt in the church since the church began. Oh Lord, have mercy. I, I want you to know, don't act as though that the church, that folk in the church are exempt from hurting you because you have hurt somebody and some and, and they have hurt you. But I'm glad tonight from the word of God that God's word is our guide, amen. God's word is our standard. God's word gives us direction and it gives us from this word how to handle our grievance while hurting. Nobody said nothing yet, so let me go and get to my three points and I'll be out your way. Number one, I want to show you that if you're going to handle your hurt, your grievances while hurting, you got to remember who you represent. Oh my God, I want you to know, I want you to know, I need you to hear me out tonight that if you're going to handle your grievance while hurting, you better remember who you represent. Say it one more time, preacher, that 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 you've been wrong, you've been hurt, you got a grievance, it's, it's messing with, but I want you to know that the way you handle it, that you got to remember who you represent. Y'all ain't talking back to me tonight that I want you to know maybe you have forgotten that you've been called out of the world. Maybe you've forgotten that you are now part of the kingdom. Oh my God. Maybe you have forgotten that you are a child of the king. And because you are a child of the king, God is looking for us to remember and to understand and to recognize and to realize that we got to remember who we represent. You got to remember who you are. And if you don't remember who you are, you're going to constantly act up the way you want to act and show up the way you want to show up. But I want to tell you tonight from the word of God that if you're going handle your grievance while hurting, you got to remember who you represent. Can somebody put that in the chat box for me right there? Amen. Y'all real quiet right to in hell. Maybe, maybe you want to act, maybe you want to act out tonight. Maybe you want to tell them a piece of your mind. Maybe you want to tell them, amen, what they did to you and how they hurt you and what they did to mistreat you. Uh, I want you to know tonight from the word of God, you got to remember uh, who you are. Amen. You got to remember, uh, you got to remember what God has called you out of. I want you to know from the word of God tonight, from the word of God, that you and I got to remember who you represent. I got to say it because some of y'all ain't got it. Y'all ain't got it. Uh, y'all going to get it in 30 seconds. Y'all going to get it in 30 seconds. You want to talk. You want to do what you want to do. You want to act the way you want to act. You want to respond the way you want to respond. But somebody got to stop here to tell you that you are not your own. You have bought. You have been bought with a price and you represent somebody greater than yourself. Watch what the text says. I ain't making it up. Here is Paul writing to the church of Corinth. Now, I need you to know the church of Corinth was a church who had issues. They had problems and they had vices going on in the church. So Paul hears about the vices. Paul hears about the problem. And so he writes them to address the issue. And so from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, all the way to 1 Corinthians up to chapter 6, he talks about this division that's taking place. He talks about, amen, these, these, these oaths and faults they have against one another. And he has to remind them that you, you got to remind you of who they are. Watch what he says in verse 1. He says, if any of you has a legal dispute against another, watch this, do you dare to go to court? Before the unrighteous. 
Oh, y'all real quiet tonight. And not before the saints. Or don't you know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest case? Talk to us, Paul. Don't you know that we will judge angels? Not to mention the ordinary matters. So if you have cases pertaining to this life, do you select those who have no standing? Watch this. In the church to judge. Watch this. I say this to your shame. Now notice what he says. I'm writing to shame you. Okay. A uh, privilege uh, in chapter three, I believe. He said, I, the, 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 the issues he was talking about, he says, I'm not going to shame you on that. He says, but this time I'm writing this to get in your grill. I'm writing this to tell you like it is. I'm writing this to shame you. He said, can it be that there is not one wise person among you who was able to arbitrate between his brothers? Instead, believer goes to unbelievers. Now, I need to put a pin note there to understand what Paul is saying. Paul says that y'all got an issue going on in the body, in the community, where somebody is being mistreated in such a way, legally, I believe, probably over some money, bless the name, and they said, we're going to go to court and we're going to fight over this money and what is owed to us. And Paul writes and said, I don't need you to do that because you got to remember who you represent. In other words, he says, don't you realize that you going to judge the world? Okay, y'all ain't got it. He said, don't you realize that you a child of God and one day when life is life is over and at the judgment, you going to help judge fallen angels. And he says to us tonight that if you're going to judge the world and you're going to help judge fallen angels, you ain't got nobody among you that can come between and help you handle the situation. Y'all ain't got it yet. In other words, he wants us to know tonight that we got to remember who we represent because when you became a child of God, you no longer just represent your. You no longer represent yourself. You represent the Lord. That's a hard word tonight. In other words, I want you to know that the the text assumes to tell us that God has a system in place in the body of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that there is there is a way. The text suggests that God has a covering in place. That when there is a issue among each a brother or a sister in Christ, that he says, don't go to an unbeliever. Don't go to outside judges. You got to follow my system. Y'all ain't talking to me tonight. I, I want you to know that's why he gave you a preacher. That's why God bless is going to bless us with elders and deacons because God has a system. Y'all ain't going, y'all don't get happy. See, I want you to know God didn't set this up uh, just to be setting it up this way. Because he understands that we are a kingdom. And because we are part of a kingdom, he knows we are part of a royal family. See, y'all don't believe that. I'm a son of a king. Amen. I may not look like it. I know y'all don't see no crown. I may not y'all see no robe. Y'all don't see no castle. But one day when this life is over, amen, when time shall be no more, the Bible says that one day I will judge fallen angels. Can I put a pin note there? That's so, that's, so, that's so important that you recognize and remember who you represent because I want you to think about it. If you're going to judge angels, that means God think of you more than what you think of yourself. <laughs> if you, see, you don't even realize the privilege it is for you to be called by God and to be a Christian. That means when you are Christian, he says you represent something on earth. And I don't need you to go to outsiders, some folk that don't believe in God, to judge a matter that should happen on the inside. Oh, my God. That's why, can I tell you this? That's why it's so important, Northwest, that when you have oaths and faults, against each other in the body, in the community, not to share your awesome faults with somebody that's not a part of the community. Somebody who's not a Christian. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your sister, or your brother. It's because God has set a system up that he wants us to follow 
to understand that you don't take it to the outsiders. You don't take it to the folk of the world, amen, but you deal with it in the body of Christ. See, I want you to see it. Y'all ain't got it yet. Y'all don't like this text, but the text is so profound to me. He says, you're going to judge angels, which means that God's going to let somebody like me, because I've been saved, he's going to give me a privilege to rule and to reign with him. See, y'all ain't. See, I want you to know, you thought heaven was just about you dying and relaxing when you get to heaven. No, 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 no. When you get to heaven, there's going to be some work to do. Oh my God, there's going to be something to do. There, there's going to be assignments on earth. Amen. Amen. And I cannot tell you, we will not be the same in heaven. Amen. I, ain't, I, ain't, I, don't, I don't mean to mess your theology up tonight, but we will not be the same in heaven. There will be some, he said, you've been faithful over a few things, but I'm going to make you ruler over many, which means, child of God, that we're, since we're going to judge angels, that means, children of God, God sees something about the child of God that we oftentimes don't see about ourselves. Oh, my God. Can I tell you, that's why if we're going to judge angels, this is powerful to me, that God gives me the privilege and the honor to be beside my elder brother, Jesus Christ, and to judge fallen angels. That's why uh, when folk die, stop telling folk, that grandma got her wings. Don't demote grandma like that. That don't don't do that. See, if you if grandma become an angel, and a brother becomes an angel, you just demoted them. <laughs> oh my God, I'm not gonna become. I'm gonna one day. I'm gonna judge fallen angels because because of what God has has done for me. What the salvation that I have, and I want you to know. He says, don't go before the unjust. To try to get them out of this place. He says, follow my sister. He says, is there not somebody that among you who can come between this thing and to help you in this matter? Oh, my God. He says, remember who you represent. Somebody put that in the chat box because y'all quiet tonight. Uh, uh, I need you to remember who you represent. The next time there's a conflict. The next time, the next time there's animosity. The next time there is gossip, the next time there is there is there is a situation. I, I need you to just pause and just remember who you represent. You represent Jesus the Christ. You are an ambassador of Jesus Christ. And I want you to know that we got to represent him well and we can't go before unbelievers and talk to unbelievers about what God wants us to handle inside. The reason folk can't get along because they don't do it God's way. Can I tell you the truth? That's the reason the mess keep going on. That's the word. That's the reason why conflict still happens. That's the red. That's the reason why it won't go away. It's because my because child of God, we have forgotten who we represent. Because when you show up, I should see Jesus. Mm. When when you talk to me, I should see a representation of Jesus Christ. I should see a God sinnerness dripping from your lips. Amen. I should see God saturated in your heart and in your mind because I remember who I represent. Okay, y'all didn't like the first one. Y'all ain't gonna like this one. Here it is. Here it is that if you're gonna handle your grievances while hurting, you gotta remember who you represent. But watch this. This is gonna hurt a little bit. Watch this. But you gotta be willing to lose so Christ can win. Help me, Holy Spirit, tonight. <laughs> that that if I'm going to handle my grievance while I'm hurting, I got to be willing to lose while, in order so Christ can win. Let me say it one more time. I want you to know it may mean that you got to lose something. It may mean that you may not look good on in the front end because you want Jesus to win because his reputation matters more than your reputation. How he looks matters more than what I look like. Y'all ain't talking back to me. It is when you in a place where you says that I'm going to take the high road, amen, because of the fact if I take the high road, Jesus going to get some glory. Okay, watch what he says in verse number, uh, verse number, verse number seven. I need you to see it. verse seven. He says, therefore, um, to have legal disputes against one another is already a moral failure for you. 
Watch what he says. Why not rather put up with injustice? Y'all see that? I, I ain't making it up. It's in your Bible if you ain't tore it out. Why not just put up with injustice? What you mean, for Paul? Paul says, why not rather be cheated? Instead, you act unjustly and cheat. In other words, when they wrong you, when they mistreat you, I'd rather for you not to go to outside. I'd rather for you, amen, to deal with it within the body. Amen. But if you're so stubborn and prideful that you don't want to deal with it in the body, he says, it's better for you to just to be treated wrong and suffer the wrong. Because in your mind, you should have a mentality that I'm willing to lose in order that Christ can win. Somebody said, preacher, that's a hard pill to swallow. You don't know what they did to me. Amen. They supposed to be my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ. Amen. They should know better. They've been in church longer than me. They know more scriptures than I do. They, they sing the loudest in church. They say amen the loudest in the church. They jump and holler. They shout. And you telling me that I'm supposed to, to just lose? He, hears it. he said, somebody, that's a hard pill to swallow. It may be a hard pill to swallow. But the but that cup that he drunk was a bitter cup, but he drunk it. The, he it's a I know the I know it's a hard pill to swallow, but do you not know that the cup that Jesus sipped and he and he drunk for your sins and mine, it was bitter, it was hard to take the cup, but he took the cup anyway because Christ said, I want them to win and I'll lose on their behalf. I'll lose in order for them to win. And I just believe, child of God, if Jesus lost so I can win, that means I can lose so he can win. And tonight I want you to know that I'm willing to lose in order that Christ can win. Yeah, that's that's what I, I want to. I, I know it's hard tonight. Because you're thinking what they did, how they did it. But can I tell you, God sees all. Can I tell you, God will make up the difference. Can I tell you, God know how to come in and show up in such a way that a blow folk mind and folk, and you know you got the right to do it based upon what the culture and the world says. You know you got the right to do them how they treat you, amen. But you just pause and say, no, I ain't gonna do it because I'm willing to lose in order that Christ may win. Can I ask you a question tonight? Who want Christ to win? Oh, I wanna, I wanna know tonight who want to make Christ look good? I want to know tonight who going to make sure God gets some glory. Amen. I know it feel good to cuss them out. I know it feel good to tell them a piece of your mind. I know it feels real good to get all that off your chest. But I need you to know tonight that you got to be willing to lose so Christ can win. Somebody say, I, I, somebody say, God, I need you to help me with this. Amen. I, I, I feel the energy tonight. I know you're saying, God, work on me, work on me, work on me. But I want you to know it's going to be worth it. I want you to know it's going to be worth it. When you die and time shall be no more, amen, when you close your eyes for the very last time and you have to meet the Lord, I want you to know it will be worth it. I want you to know that says, God, I'm going to do what you want me to do and allow your spirit to guide me. So watch this. I'm done. If, if you're going to handle your grievances while hurting, you got to, number one, remember who you represent. Number two, you got to be willing to lose so Christ can win. But watch this third. This, this third one is kind of hard, but you got to check your unrighteous behavior. Okay, y'all gonna y'all ain't said nothing so far, so y'all gonna read about it. You, you got to check your unrighteous behavior. Now, I, I need you to know something that this, this, this messed me up when I was studying this text and uh, just looking at it from the first glance, uh, you, you'll miss it. But I, I want to examine it just a little farther. Notice what he says in verse eight, verse nine. He says, don't you know that the unrighteous will not inherit the God's kingdom? Y'all see that? He says, do not be deceived, nor sexual and moral people, idolaters, adulterers, anyone practicing homosexuality, 
no thieves, watch this, greedy people, drunkards, watch this, verbally abusive people, sw swindlers will inherit God's kingdom. Now, uh, Sister Keller, when I was studying this, uh, I'm trying to figure out in my study, when you study, you got to ask the right questions because I'm trying to figure out what does verse number nine has absolutely anything to do with verse number one through eight. I mean, the list that you're talking about, Paul, what does that list has anything to do with me taking my brother or my sister to court when they wronged me? When I want you to look at it, he says in verse eight, instead you act unjust and treat and you do this to unbelievers. Now I want you to understand the reason they go into court anyway is because a brother or sister in Christ it's the one who has defra defrauded them or has cheated them. And so they're going to court because the person who shows up in the gathering, the person who shows up and worship God and sing and shout, that person, the Bible says, is unrighteous. Now, Paul has to put a list together because the person who is defrauding his brother may feel like he's not unrighteous because you don't see his acts openly. But Paul does something I think that's amazing. He does something to show that the person who defrauds somebody is equal to the person to the list. The person that defrauds his brother is just as guilty as the person that's a fornicator. The person that's the father's his brother is just as guilty as the person who practices homosexuality. The person who defrauds his brother is just as guilty as the person who's an idolater and a drunkard. He, in other words, he wants you to know you can't separate your faith walk with from your action walk. In other words, he's talking to them because this is not something that they're struggling with. No, 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 no. He's talking about a struggle. See, I ain't talking about those who are struggling with the list. Because some of y'all may be struggling with the list. Hey, Amen. There, there are moments because we all sin, bless the name of Jesus, and you struggle. He ain't talking about, he's talking about people who's making this a lifestyle. And he wants them to understand something that the person who is defrauding their brother is just as guilty as the one who's practicing homosexuality. So he says, I don't want to put you off the list because you think just because you ain't practicing homosexuality and you ain't practicing drunkenness and idolatry, you good. He says, not the case. The mere fact that you are a swindler, the mere fact that you know how to defraud your brother and sister in Christ. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. It's when you defraud your brother and sister in Christ, it's when you call me and tell me you need gas money for the week. And I give you gas money and defo give you my last hundred dollars for a man for gas money for the week. But you go buy some joints. Bless the name of Jesus. You go buy your out. You defraud me. You you manipulated me. You cheated me. Amen. I'm I'm trying to do right by you but you turn around and do wrong by me. He says, you just as guilty as the people on the list. In other words, I need you to check your unrighteous behavior. Can I talk to somebody tonight who think that only unrighteous behavior is a sexual act? <laughs> see, see, that's the wrong with the church. The church actually thinks sometimes when something that's an unright uh, unrighteous behavior it's a sexual act, but it's deeper than a sexual act. In other words, when you mistreat me liberally and deliberately on purpose, you have no integrity. You know what you're doing and how you're doing it. And you're trying to hurt me in the process. He says that you are unrighteous. Notice also in the list, notice in the list, he says verbally abusive people. <laughs> oh my God, some of y'all made the list. The, the, verbal, the verbal abusive person, the person who know how to test somebody down with their tongue. The person, a man, who knows how to rip somebody a new one with that pink tornado in your mouth. The person who got a PhD in cussing and you know how to make them feel real little when you get, he said you made the list too. 
Yeah, you thought because you had your, your, your body in check, but you ain't got your mouth in check, you was okay. He says, no, I don't care if you got that in check. If you are verbally abusive, he says, you made the list too, and you will not inherit the kingdom if it's a lifestyle. Y'all ain't talking back to me. He says, now why I got to do this? He said, I like what he says, and I'm done. Verse 11, he said, I got to check my unrighteous behavior. Why? Why verse 11? He says, and some of you used to be like this. Oh my God, I w- if I can, <laughs> if, I, if I just, we have a sin detector tonight just to know how many of you used to be like this. If we, if, if y'all better be happy that God ain't got a sin detector, y'all better be happy that when you walk up into the house of God, the church building, that they don't go out and it, it don't, amen, it's not a sin. De- you better be happy when you walk through and I say, be liar, be fun. Okay, you better be happy God ain't got a sin detector. He says, such was some of you, but watch this. But you were washed. Ah, that's why we got to get along. That's why I got to, we was washed. Haven't you forgotten that he washed you? Haven't you forgotten that he, that you was baptized for the remission of your sins and you met, you met grace with your guilt? Ah, you was washed. Watch this. And you were sanctified. So I've been washed. I met grace. But I was sanctified. I've been set apart. In other words, y'all know what set apart mean. It is me, amen. It is when, amen. Y'all know how y'all eating at the house, amen. New, the new schoolers, amen. My grandma didn't do it, but the new schoolers, y'all eat the, y'all have the paper plates and they, they don't want to wash dishes. So y'all, everybody eat the paper plate, amen. But when sometime when, when, when grandma said, when family come over and the folk come over, you get out the fine china because you set that apart, amen. That fine china wasn't like the paper plate. I want you to know tonight that God set you apart. That when, 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 wait, man, when you got saved, babe, man, when you show up in any environment, the environment don't even know what they got because you showed up. Amen. Amen. Just be, you walked on the job, but you ain't like everybody on the job. You've been set apart. Amen. You have been sanctified. And then he says, you've been justified. Justified. Now watch what he said. You've been washed. You met grace. You've been sanctified, set apart. But then he said, you've been justified. You've been made right with God. Okay, let me say it again. You've been washed. You met grace. You've been sanctified. You've been set apart. But then he says, you've been justified. You've been made right with God. He says, because of that, why shouldn't we get along? I got to check my unrighteous behavior and stop thinking your unrighteous behavior is a sexual sin. It may be that, that hey, you how you talk to people. It may be how you manipulate people. It may be how you got the gift of gab and the person don't even know they being manipulated by you, but you using them as a pawn. It may be that. He says, you got, that's unrighteous behavior. And it all makes you think, if a person can defraud me with a clear conscience, it makes you question whether or not they're a Christian or for real or not. Ah, oh, for you to cheat me and you know you was wrong. For you to, amen, for you to, we in the parking lot and you hit my car and you rush out and you don't even say nothing to me that you hit my car. Ah, oh, geez, it makes me question whether or not you even know the Lord. I want you to know tonight, how do you handle your grievance of why you're hurting. Remember who you represent. Be willing to lose so Christ can win. And check your unrighteous behavior. Then and only then we'll be able to get along. Why? Because we're following God's system. That's why Hebrews 13 and 7 says, remember those who have taught you the word of God and follow them and imitate their faith. Because God has a system. God has a way that he sets things up. And if we, I double dog dare you tonight. If you just make up in your mind, if you just make up in your heart and say, God, I'm going to do something different. God, I'm going to learn how to handle things the way you say handle. God will bless you. And he'll bless you in a mighty way. May God bless you tonight. I pray that this word tonight will stay with you. You ask God to move in your life. 
so you can represent him on earth the way that he wants to be represented. Amen. Listen, thank you for joining us tonight. It is my prayer. It is my hope that the word of God, it transformed your life in some form and some way. All I ask now as we're about, as we close, that you go out and tell somebody uh, the nuggets that you got tonight, those things that change your life. I pray I see you Sunday morning. May God bless you and may I bless you real good. Thank you.